Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we got our, some parts that have come in for the lead attachment over on my horizontal milling machine. And I thought I'd show you an unboxing. The crate showed up in the mail today. And uh, we're going to see what's inside. See if we can uh, use this to help get our uh, lead attachment up and going. So a beautifully packaged crate arrived in the mail. Uh, I'm going to take it apart and see what's inside. So this comes from Doug Youngberg, who is up in Oregon. And uh, Doug had seen my video that I did showing the lead attachment and seeing the missing parts that I had, the, the worm gears that uh, were MIA on mine. And he got to noticing that when he saw a picture of the actual worms, he says, you know what? I think I've got some of that stuff sitting in the shop. Look at there. Um, turns out he had bought a lot at an auction. I think it was a military surplus type deal, if I remember the story correctly. And uh, there was a set of these gears that was in, in a just a bunch of stuff that he got. He had no idea what they went to. And when he saw my video, he recognized that he had these parts um, and he offered them to me, which was awesome because he had no use for them, didn't even know what they went to. And uh, I had a great need for these, uh, these particular parts. So uh, Doug, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, for sending these along, this is going to go a huge way toward getting my lead attachment going. So these are the worm gear sets. Let's see if we can get them out of here and I'll, we'll give you an idea of how they work. All right, so it looks like he put some bolts through here that are holding in a piece that slides out that are have these parts captured in this. This is a excellent packing. Uh, a lot of times when you try to ship stuff like this right here, you just throw it in a cardboard box. Um, USPS, UPS, FedEx, whoever you're using, they tend to throw stuff around. <laughs> they don't take the best care of, of their uh, shipments and it arrives and everything's messed up. So he was kind enough to build a wooden crate, custom built wooden crate here to hold all this and it makes a huge difference. All right, look at he's got some finger holes in here to lift these pieces out. And now the gear sets come out. He has them on some wooden dowels. This is great, awesome packaging. Let's get it all out of here. So this piece here, I don't think this actually goes with the lead attachment that I have. It may be a K and T part. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to have to, oh, you know what this is? This goes up and this is actually is off the lead attachment. I have this part. This is the part that um, fits up onto the spline coming out of the table and one of these gears fits up on, si on top of this inside the lead attachment. I've actually have that part. Now I've got a spare. And we've also got a set of change gears here, which I had some change gears. I was missing a few. I need to take final inventory once we get all these apart. And I think I'm still missing a couple, but I can use these to make the ones that I don't have. Use my spares, rather. Got another gear down here in the bottom. And there's also a spline shaft down here. Well, this uh, box is a work of art. Thank you so much, Doug, for taking the time to uh, build a proper shipping box.
It really, really makes a difference. There we go. So this shaft is, um, again, I'm not sure if this was part of the K&T set, but I need a spline shaft to go from the dividing head to the lead attachment. I was gonna have to buy or make one. He had this one here, and uh, this one's gonna be just perfect for what we need. So let's take a quick look here at what all uh, Doug sent us over. Again, we have the change gears. Uh, I, this is not a complete set. I have another set that was sent to me by Ron Grundy, but between the two, I need, think I'm only missing um, two. I need to double check that. I don't think I'm only missing two of these gears. Uh, and I have some spares, which is nice because uh, the ones I'm missing are smaller sizes. Like I know I'm missing a tw another 20. Uh, but what I can do is I can take one of the larger ones and turn it down. I won't have to recreate that internal spline. I can just use the one off of one of these gears and I can just cut those gear teeth over on my dividing head and on the middle machine. So uh, like I said, the, the two that I'm missing, I can make from this set. These are the big things that we're missing. Worst case, I could have made a set of these uh, because my middle machine will, will, will do this. Uh, oh, look at there. These came from the Navy. Uh, it's got USN ground on there. All these do. United States Navy and has a serial number. So he told me he got them off a of military surplus. So these actually came from the Navy. Uh, anyway, sidetracked. These are the things that were really difficult to find, uh, these particular worm gear sets. And there's three different options, three different ones that could go into this lead attachment. And they have different ratios. So this one is a one to three ratio. So basically, uh, every time uh, I think that this is turned, well, one, one arm turns one time, one arm turns three times. Uh, this one is one to 24. And this one is one to 96. So you see they have different pitches on them. This one right here has a really, really fine pitch you got to really turn this thing you got to turn it 96 times uh, to turn it one turn on the other side whereas you got to turn this one three times to get it to turn up here um, so you can see the difference in the in the pitches on these now I'm not going to say I couldn't have made one of these, but these would have been very difficult for me to have made because I just don't have the right equipment in my shop to do worm gears. Um, so these are were a huge find, uh, really helpful. And like I said before, we got the spline shaft. This is the shaft that these uh, gears fit up on, as well as some other stuff. And um, I, I needed this shaft uh, for a a piece that I'm, I'm having to recreate because I don't have them and this is just basically a spare part for me um, that will go up in that uh, lead attachment. All right, I'm going to take these over to the lead attachment. We're going to install one of these worm gear sets and just make sure everything fits like it should. So I'm over here at the lead attachment on the milling machine and what I want to do is take these plates off right here. These are where the worm gear sets actually reside uh, where you can change them out. So I need to get these covers off. There's one here and there's one here. Let's see here. That one just slides right off. Take this other cover off over here now. There we go. So basically you got the worm and the worm gear. And depending on the, the lead that you're cutting, you can either put them one way or the other. So there's three different combinations or three different uh, ratios between these two. And they are there are two different possible ways you can put them in there. So there's basically six possible combinations that you can do with these worm sets. I'm gonna start by putting the actual worm down here in first. And I had already kind of pressed that on there, um, on that shaft. It's just easier to put it on outside the, the setup here. 
I'm just going to take some spindle oil here, some real light oil, and just kind of oil that inside of this to help it slide up on that shaft. It's a really, really tight fit. And there we go. And we've got to mesh the two gears. There we go. I've got them started here. I've got this one in and the cover on and we're going to do the same thing down here uh, with the second cover. Just put a little oil in there. Uh, cover only fits on in one position. Let's see if we can get it started up on. There's a little flange on the inside of this that has to line up and start on. Once it gets started, it uh, goes up on there fairly easy, but it takes a little finesse here to get it lined up and going. It's going now. these screws off just a little bit and just got to tap in a little bit to get lined up right. So take a block of wood here. These pieces twist. The, the large end will actually slide over the screws. When you turn it a little bit, it, uh, the flanges on these nuts engage better. So let's just go ahead and tighten these on up. It's pulling in fine now. All right, I think we got it. Now, I'm gonna fire it up. We'll engage the table and we should see this uh, gear here start spin. This is where we build our gear train with the change gears out to drive the dividing head. Now I have engaged the table. You can see this shaft is turning down here. And if you look real closely, this shaft is turning as well. And it's turning in that ratio of uh, one to 24. So basically this has got to turn 24 times to turn this shaft one time the way it is right now. All right, I got a set of change gears on here now so you can kind of see, uh, you know, we, once we have the ratio of the worm gear set, we can change uh, ratios between these driver and driven gears here, these change gears. So we got one ch possible combination between these two spindles. This is just an idler. There's another gear back here. And I remember in a previous video, we made this uh, drive shaft, this drive shaft, I got to build the support bracket for it still, but it comes in here and the, uh, another gear fits up on this. It drives this drive shaft and the drive shaft comes out the back and there's a connection between here and the dividing head. And that's what's going to actually rotate the dividing head to create that helical or gear or spiral gears that sometimes called. So uh, still got a little bit to do before I'm ready to actually hook everything up. But let's make sure to see, watch those change gears turn in here. I'll uh, turn the mill on. I'll engage the table. 
and you can very easily see there the, uh, the action going on. Let's take a look at these uh, change gears here. I've taken inventory. According to the manual, uh, this is the, the pitch gears or the number of teeth gears rather that you need for a set. There's two 20s, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and 40. Now in the stack that Doug sent me, uh, you can see I was missing one, two, three, four gears. In the stack that Ron had sent me, I was missing a couple quite a few more. Uh, fortunately, there were two of the gears that Ron sent me were missing out of this stack. I'm still missing the 20 and 24, uh, but like I mentioned earlier in the video, I should be able to take some of the larger gears here and make the missing gears using these as blanks. Basically, I'll just turn the teeth off of some of these larger ones and then go over to the horizontal mill and cut the right number of teeth in there. These are 10 pitch. Uh, here's a pitch gauge and that 10 pitch fits it perfectly. I'm pretty sure I have the envelope cutters in a 10 pitch to make those. Uh, so that'll be a project to make a 20 and a 24 tooth gear from some extra blanks over here to have a full set. Well, there we go. Got some more parts for our lead attachment. We are definitely making progress. Uh, I got to get that casting back. Uh, sent the pattern off to Clark Easterling up at Windy Hill Foundry to make the, the bearing block to hold that little other shaft that I had to make. Uh, once I get that back in and figure out, get the linkage between the dividing head and the lead attachment, I think we're going to be ready to go here. So definitely making progress, getting these uh, worm gear sets, huge, huge help, as was a, a bulk of my change gears that I needed. This is going to save me from having to make a lot of gears and uh, making the gears is not a big deal. Doing that internal spline was going to be a challenge for me. I had a way figured out that I could do it, uh, but it was going to be a lot of work, particularly for the number of gears that I was going to need. But now that I've got the stacks, uh, you know, again, I'm going to have to cut the outsides on two of these to get a full set, but that's going to be pretty easy since I have some that have the right spline already cut in them. It's going to really make that job a lot, lot easier. So Doug, thank you so much for um, seeing and recognizing these parts that I needed, realize that you had them and that you had no need for them and uh, being willing to pass them along to me to help me with my project. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, like I said, this is a huge, huge help and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, I'm really blown away uh, that I was able to find these, these gears as easily as I, I did. Once again, the power of YouTube and social media and just putting out in front of a large group of people what you need. And uh, this is not the first time that someone has found, had a part that I needed that was sitting on a shelf that they didn't even know what it went to until they saw it in one of my videos. It's just absolutely amazing and mind boggling uh, that we're able to, to pull that off from time to time. And uh, I, I'm really surprised that we were able to do it here. But uh, again, thank you so much, Doug. Guys, with that, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, comments, appreciate it, as are those thumbs up. And come back soon. Hopefully, we're going to be playing around with cutting some spiral gears very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, we'll talk to you next time around.